Hey guys, how are you doing? The study is going to be about uh, Gehenna, and if you don't know what Gehenna is, um, it's mentioned twelve times in the New Testament um, from the four Gospels: um, Matthew, Mark, Luke. I'm not sure if it's mentioned in John. Actually, it might just be the three. But basically, it's um, the the word hell has been mistranslated by the KJV translators. The original word is Gehenna. I don't know how you spell it. Maybe Gehenna or Gehenna. I don't know. But um, basically, what what the translators have done is translated four different words into the same one hell. So when you see hell, it could be either Gehenna, Sheol which in the Old Testament means the grave, and in the New Testament means Hades, which they, they mean the same thing. Just in Hebrew, Sheol means grave, and Hades means grave, so they're the equivalent of each other. And then uh, Tartarus, or Tartaru, um, which is mentioned, I think, once uh, in, I think it's First or Second Peter. Um, anyway, yeah, so there's four words here which they've, put as hell which should be four different words basically and they mean different things apart from obviously Hades and Sheol mean the same thing but they're just one's Greek and one's Hebrew so um, there's this weird kind of um, myth that Jesus talks about hell more than heaven which is completely false I mean um, there's only 12 occurrences of the word Gehenna or hell in the New Testament, in the Gospels, uh, and I'm going to point these out. Tw I mean, twelve times. It's not a lot. You won't find, you won't find it in the Old Testament at all. You might find the word hell because um, they translated Sheol as hell, which means the grave. So that's eliminated. The Old Testament doesn't teach about hell at all. You won't find it in the Old Testament. Um, the only time you'll you'll see Gehenna in the Old Testament is when it's being mentioned because Gehenna really is a, a physical place in Jerusalem called uh, the Valley of Hinnom or Gay Hinnom um, and I'll point these scriptures out in a minute but yeah God doesn't warn Adam and Eve of hell he doesn't he doesn't warn Cain of hell he doesn't warn Abraham or any of those people um, if if this place was only taught when Jesus came um, that would have been basically not fair. I mean, think of all the people before Jesus who, who weren't warned about it, um, who would have gone there if this was true, but obviously, according to the Old Testament, the righteous and the unrighteous both went to Sheol, which is the grave. Um, so yeah, um, you won't find Paul teach about hell at all in any of his epistles. Um, it's not, I don't think it's mentioned by John. Uh, it's only mentioned in the first three Gospels and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take you through what Gehenna is I've got two sources here um, one's from the Bible study tools I mean uh, I've researched this for about over a year now so originally Gay Bene Hinnom the valley of the sons of Hinnom a deep narrow glen to south of Jerusalem where idolatrous Jews offered the children a sacrifice to Molech. This valley afterwards became common receptacle for all those refuse of the city. Here the dead bodies, animals and the criminals and all cows of filth were cast in and consumed by fire kept always burning and thus in the process of time became the image of place of everlasting destruction. Uh, in the sense it was used by our Lord in um, Matthew 5.22 Matthew 5.29, Matthew 5.30, Matthew 10.28, uh, 18.19, Matthew 23.15, Matthew 23.33, Mark 9.43, Mark 9.45, Mark 9.47, Luke 12.5. Uh, in these passages and also in James 3.6. So the word is uninformally rendered hell and the rise to reversion replaces Gehenna in the margin. So that's just from one source basically but then in wikileaks no not wikileaks wikipedia sorry um i've only just woken up by the way so <laughs> my head's all over the place here yeah in in wikipedia it says gehenna 
the Hebrew Gehinnom, um, derived from a place outside of ancient Jerusalem known as in the Hebrew Bible as the Valley of the Sons of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom is the modern name for the valley surrounding Jerusalem's old city, including Mount Zion. From west to south, it meets and merges with the Kidron Valley, another principal valley around the old city near the southern corner of the city. In the Hebrew Bible, Gehenna was initially the apostate Israelites and followers of various Baals and other Canaanite gods, including Molech, sacrificed their children in fire. See uh, Second Chronicles 28, 3, 33, 6. Thereafter, it was deemed to be cursed. The Jewish rabbinic literature and Christian and Islamic scripture, Gehenna is the destination of the wicked. This is different from the more natural neutral Sheol Hades, the abode of the dead. Although the King James Version of the Bible usually translates both with the Anglo-Saxon word hell. In the King James Version of the Bible, the term appears 13 times in 11 different verses as Valley of Hinnom, Valley of the Son of Hinnom, or the Valley of Children of Hinnom. Right, so that's from Wikipedia. And I'm going to show you some verses in the Old Testament. So Jesus is talking about a literal place in Jerusalem where the Jews sacrificed their sons to Molech, where the people in the city threw their dump, basically, or their rubbish, um, dead bodies, dead animals, anything, went into this valley of fire. And what it did was that they kept it continuously burning. It was continuously... Um, consuming with you know the term um, the fire never quenches and the worm dieth not which means that um, all this dead stuff you know was continuously being thrown in and feeding the worms uh, the fire was constantly going and burning because it was stuff continuously going in to be burnt so Jesus gave this analogy um, and often literal as well because um, he knew the judgment of Jerusalem was coming um, in that generation. Um, he knew the city would go down in flames and the, those Jews would be judged and be thrown into that place. Um, in, you know, in, in 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem, um, those Jews would be judged and be thrown into, into Gehenna, the literal Gehenna. Um, so yeah, when Jesus talks about this place Gehenna, um, he was talking to the Jews because of their coming judgment, and he's obviously not talking about this hell that people keep talking about, and um, was brought in to the faith by um, you know the Jews. They they got that belief from the pagans and Babylon, but. Um, yeah, this place is a real place, and I'm going to show you now where Jesus, um, why Jesus talks about this place and where it's referenced in the Old Testament. Because if Jesus teaches this, it's obviously in the Old Testament, and they themselves knew what he was talking about. The reason why Paul never mentioned this place to the Gentiles is because they wouldn't have a clue what he was on about. It was a place in Jerusalem. The people outside of Jerusalem, they wouldn't even know what Gehenna was. So. What would be the point in Paul talking about Gehenna if the Gentiles wouldn't have any clue what he was talking about? So anyway, Joshua 15.8. Then it ran up the valley of ben Hinnom along the southern shape of the uh, Jebusut city, that is Jerusalem, from where it is climbed up to the top of the hill, the west of Hinnom Valley, at the north end of Valley of uh, Rephaim. So that's Joshua 15.8. So... People say this is not a place in Jerusalem. They obviously haven't read this verse because it's telling you where it is and what it is. Second Kings twenty three ten. He desecrated uh, Topheth, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnom, so no one could use it to sacrifice the son or daughter into the fire to Molech. So obviously, if people are saying this is bull crap, they they're just ignoring these verses, which which talk about this valley and this fire. Jeremiah 7.31 They have built the high places of Topheth in the valley of ben Hinnom to burn their sons and daughters in the fire. Something I did not command, nor did enter my mind. So that's God saying that 
Um, he never told them to do this. It never even entered his mind. Um, he he, well, this is obviously detestable to him. <clears throat> these people are doing this. So Jeremiah seven thirty two. So beware, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the people will no longer call it Topheth, in the valley of Ben Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they will bury their dead in Topheth until there is no more room. Jeremiah thirty two thirty five. They built high places for Baal in the valley of Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech, though I never commanded nor did it enter my mind for they should that they should do such detestable thing and so make Judah sin. So he's saying what they're doing, passing their children through the fire, is detestable to him and never did it enter his mind. So this idea that God's gonna throw billions and billions of people in fire for all eternity, he doesn't have a problem with that. But he has a problem with actual physical thrown into fire. He finds it detestable. So um so right, there's the Old Testament verses that talk about Gehenna, which is what Jesus is talking about in the New Testament. Right, so I'm literally going to show you uh, the 12 occurrences where it happens in the Gospels. Right, so you've got Matthew 23, 15, which says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over the land and sea to win a single convert. When you have succeeded, you make them twice as much child of Gehenna as you are. Matthew twenty three thirty three. You snakes, you brood of vipers! How will you escape being condemned to Gehenna? Um, Mark nine forty three. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it's better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, where the fire never goes out. So, a lot of people think this is he's talking about. You're going to be thrown in a spiritual dimension. That's this burning lake of fire, molten lava, whatever, and you're going to be thrown in there, and it never ends, it's eternal. But what, what he's actually talking about is the literal place called Gehenna, where the fire never goes out because it's continuously burning rubbish, and they they themselves will be thrown in there. Um, Mark 9.45 And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut off, for it's better for you to enter life crippled, than to have two feet and be thrown into Gehenna. Uh, Mark 9.47 If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out, for it's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into Gehenna. Um, Luke 12.15 No, 12.5, sorry. But I'll show you whom you should fear. Fear him after your body's been killed has authority to throw you into Gehenna. Yes. I tell you, fear him. Right, so here it says um, body and soul. <clears throat> because man can kill your body, but God can destroy your body and soul. Um, so a lot of people think, again, this is um, your body and soul be thrown into hell. But hell is a spiritual dimension. You can't throw a physical body in somewhere in a... In a a spiritual dimension but then a lot of people would say well um your fire your your body will will go into physical hell and then your body your soul will go into um spiritual hell which makes no sense but in the old testament the soul was created it's not immortal um i think it's in genesis where it says um God breathed life into his nostrils and he became a living soul. So, personally, I think the soul is a creation um, between God's spirit and dust or flesh. Um, creates a soul or like a, a personality or a will, you know, with emotions and and stuff. So, that I think that can be destroyed along with the body because... There's um, a verse that says, the soul that sins shall die. Anyway, um, James 3.6. The tongue also is fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, it sets the whole course of one's life on fire. And itself set on fire by Gehenna. Um, and, yeah, that's, I think that's all... 
No, it's not. Sorry. I've been reading from halfway down. Um, there's some more verses here. The, the, the majority of them in Matthew, okay? So, Matthew 5.22. But I tell you, anyone who's angry with a brother or sister will be sub subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be danger of the fire of Gehenna. So, anyone who says, you fool. So, how many people do I know who say that? Um... A lot of people I know say call their brothers a fool, so are they the ones that are condemning other people to hell. So um, Matthew five twenty nine, you know, it's just it's just the same thing over again. If you're right, cause you'd stumble, um, you know, blah blah blah. It's just it's just saying the same thing over again. So um, there's not twelve single occurrences of the word Gehenna. It's literally um, a few verses, but then are. Um, have a counterpart in the other Gospels. They basically all say the same thing. But yeah, if you if you look at the Strong's Concordance and put Gehenna in, it'll tell you the where those twelve occurrences are, which I pretty much told you. But um, kind of jumping around here because I got I've, I got a study here and other studies open, so I'm just jumping around trying to find all the stuff. To tell you, but yeah. So, yeah, this myth that Jesus talks about hell more than heaven or the kingdom of God is absolute crap. I don't know where people are getting that from. They hear it and then they just repeat it. But, yeah, Gehenna is a real place uh, that was south of Jerusalem where um, the idolatrous Jews sacrificed their kids to Molech in. People threw dead bodies in. Um, garbage, anything. The fire never went out because things were constantly being thrown in. Um, this is what Jesus is talking about. And they knew what he was talking about because they knew what Gehenna was. It was there. It was in the city. That's why it's never mentioned anywhere else in the Bible because no one would have a clue what it was. So, <clears throat> yeah, if you if you look at the Strongs and look up Hades and Sheol, you'll see where they occur and where Gehenna is used, where it's just referencing this place. But in my opinion, and this is a strong... There's strong evidence for this, that this place, Gehenna, was threatened to Jews because Jesus knew of the coming destruction and judgment upon Jerusalem in 70 AD, um, where they would be locked in the gates and the Roman army would be surrounding that place and they would come in and they would destroy the temple, um, which Jesus said would happen in I think it's Matthew 23 and 24. But um, it was a mass slaughter. All the Jews were killed, burnt alive, beheaded, the lot. It was, uh, it was, a, it was very horrible. But Jesus knew this was going to happen and he warned them. And he warned the apostles also. So he said, when you see these signs, those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Um, go across rooftop. Don't, get your, don't go back and get your cloak. Um... Basically, he was just warning his apostles what was going to happen in their generation about the coming destruction of Jerusalem. And when they see the signs that Jesus talk about, these Christians would um, get out of Jerusalem and flee to the mountains while this coming judgment came upon Jerusalem in 70 AD. So, yeah, if you don't know about the Jerusalem 70 AD thing, massively, massively important. Look it up and the whole the whole thing will start to come together and make sense to you. But yeah, um, this word hell, um, it, it, it's the church has twisted this word into this image people have, which came from the the the, you know, the heathen, the pagan beliefs from Babylon. So anyway, what does this word hell mean? Anyway, let's have a look. So it was an Anglo-Saxon word. Also, hell, the old English hell or hella, um, netherworld, abode of the dead, inferior regions, um, Yeah, it's an old old Saxon word, Dutch hell, Old Norse hell, German holler, Gothic holler, literally concealed place. Um, <clears throat> the English may be in part from the Old Norse mythology hell, from Proto-Germanic, uh, one that covers up or hides something. In, North, uh, in Norse mythology, the name of Loki's daughter who rules over the evil dead... Um, 
Nephim, the lowest of all worlds, a pagan concept, a word fitted to the Christian idiom. The Middle English, also of the Limbus Patrum, place where the patriarch's prophets awaited the atonement. Used in the KGV or Old Testament Hebrew Sheol, the New Testament Greek Hades, Gehenna, used figuratively for state of misery, any bad experience. Um, I got that from um, some sources, but uh, I might put these in the description where I got all this from. So basically, I'm just I'm just trying to get all the important things from the study. But um, hell literally was like an uh, an Anglo-Saxon word, um, German. Um, it's where the word helmet comes from. It just means to cover or conceal. So in essence, it does mean Sheol and Hades because Sheol and Hades means to cover or unseen realm of the dead um, and hell does mean that but you know this this word's been twisted into portraying something that was from p pagan concepts um, Babylonian concepts and Greek mythology which really does not have any place in the Bible it's just the translators had this theology and this, these images and they put these words down to kind of um, portray this so, anyway, yeah, Gehenna, look it up. It's uh, it's really interesting, and it'll make the New Testament the Gospels all fit in together and make sense finally. So yeah, quite an interesting study. Um, might do another video on it later on um, in more detail, but just wanted to keep this a bit short. So yeah, cheers, guys.